Dean Hayes. By authorization of the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System and the Colorado State University faculty, I declare the 116th commencement of the Warner College of Natural Resources and the 134th commencement of Colorado State University to be in session. Thank you very much, Dr. Conan. To begin our ceremony, please stand and join Mr. John Lewick in the singing of our national anthem. Please be seated. Members of the platform party, distinguished faculty members, esteemed guests, and of course, the awesome students graduating this evening, just today. Good morning. It is my honor and great pleasure to welcome you to the Warner College of Natural Resources Spring 2016 Commencement Ceremony. This morning is the first event of this type that we have ever had in the college in Moby Arena. Because of the impacts of our program and the interests of our students, we've outgrown all of our previous venues, and today's graduating class is the largest ever from our college. I'm John Hayes, Dean of the Warner College of Natural Resources, and I have to admit, I'm so proud to be standing in front of this amazing group, and I just love this event. This group of students who are moving along their journeys to become the next generation of leaders in a diverse suite of natural resource professions and who are about to become the most recent graduates of Colorado State University. CSU has a rich tradition and those of you who are here today are a part of that legacy. The first classes in natural resources were taught at CSU during the dawn of America's conservation movement in 1904, 112 years ago. 112 years. That was a long time ago. Teddy Roosevelt was president. The Wright brothers had just flown their first airplane. Only about 3% of the houses in our country had electricity. Crayons had just been invented. <laughs> Women didn't have the right to vote, and the total number of people in the state of Colorado was about the same as the number of people who currently live in Fort Collins. A lot's changed since 1904, but one thing has not changed. Today, as was the case 112 years ago, CSU serves as a beacon to a group of students who come through Fort Collins to educate themselves about natural resources, to hone the skills that they will use for the rest of their lives, and to go on to make important impacts in the state, the country, and across the planet. To those of you graduating today, 
you take your place in a long line of leaders who've come through CSU and have gone on to shape the world and its natural resource professions. As you think about today, most of you probably think about this ceremony as graduation and as the end point in your undergraduate experience. But that's actually not what we call it. We call it commencement. A commencement's not a closure or an end point, but a beginning and a start. And that really is what today is all about. Certainly, we're here today to recognize the successes and the tremendous achievements that you graduating tonight, today have made during your time at CSU. But more importantly, I believe, we're here to bear witness to the turning of a page and the commencement of a new chapter in life. For the graduates here today, and for many of the rest of you as well, today will forever serve as a marker in time. Today is one of those handful of special times in our lives that define our, that's a defining point on life's timeline. From here on out, many of the things that happen to you will be described as happening before this day or after this day. It's indeed a very special morning. Our students graduating here today have worked long and hard to arrive at this point, but as the students well understand, the path taken to arrive at this ceremony was not a solitary one, and there's three very important groups of people that have been instrumental in that journey that I would like to recognize. The first is your fellow students in the Warner College who've shared the journey with you, stressed over exams with you, learned beside you, and traveled with you through your courses at the Mountain College, or excuse me, their Mountain Campus, through the Geology Summer Field Course, and through all of your adventures at CSU. Many of those people have moved from being strangers to being friends and colleagues, and indeed, some of those former strangers will be your closest friends and colleagues for the rest of your life. Graduating students, I invite you to tell your friends, the friends sitting beside you, thanks, and to give them a fist bump, a high five, or a hug. Come on! The, sec the second group I'd like to recognize is the amazing faculty at CSU, a world-class group of scientists and educators who've shared their knowledge and time to help our students achieve their potential. Would the faculty please stand so that we can recognize you and thank you for all you do for our students. And the third group, the third group is perhaps the most important group. The parents and spouses, and friends and siblings, and the community of people who stood beside each of our students, who lended a helping hand when it was needed, who offered a pat on the back when good grades were achieved and projects were finished, who included so many of our students on their cell phone payment plans and who gave encouragement and hope on days when it was needed to smooth the path to the finish line. Would the family and friends of our graduates please stand and be recognized so we can thank you for everything that you have done. At this time, I'd like to invite Associate Dean Rich Conant back to the podium to introduce our platform party and lead tonight's ceremony. Rich. Good morning and welcome. As I introduce each person, I will ask them to rise and remain standing throughout the introductions. Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. Dr. Ken Wilson, Head, Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Dr. Rick Astor, Head, Department of Geosciences. Dr. John Moore, Head, Department of Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Dr. Michael Manfredo, Head, Department of Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. Dr. Linda Nagel, Head, Department of Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. Ms. Caitlin Martinez, Alumni, Department of Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. Ms. Marina Rodriguez, Graduating Senior, Department of Fish, Wildlife and Conservation Biology. 
Ms. Courtney Nauman, graduating senior, Department of Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. Dr. Brett Briere, Associate Professor, Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. Dr. David Gilkey, Interim Vice Provost for Undergraduate Affairs. Mr. Scott Gilmore, Keynote Speaker. Ms. Jane Rob Rhodes, Member, Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System. Dr. John P. Hayes, Dean, Warner College of Natural Resources. Let's recognize this group. I would also like to take a moment to introduce Dr. John Loic and our soloist in our quintet, Big Thompson Brass. Let's recognize this group. Now, I would like to call Courtney Nauman, graduating senior in the Human Dimensions of Natural Resources Department, to give our graduating senior address. Courtney. Thank you to Rich, Dean Hayes, and the assembled faculty and staff. I'm honored to be able to speak to the graduates, those who have supported them throughout the years, and those who have been valuable resources to depend upon. We've all come from different paths, are headed towards our respective avenues, and each of us has this unique driving passion within us. The anticipation that we felt beginning this journey was tangible. For some of us, college was the first time we were on our own. For others, it was a goal that had finally been reached, one that had maybe never seemed possible. Whether we're going into the real world with a big girl boy <laughs> or job right off the bat, are planning on working seasonally for a few months, are continuing a job we've already gotten a few years under our belts, or heading across the globe to travel and build our capacities for experiencing cultures truly and wholeheartedly, we've made it. We're here. Be proud of this accomplishment because it truly isn't one that everyone is able to attain. We've worked hard, but we're just as lucky. The opportunity of achieving higher education is a great honor, and I hope each one of you feels proud. The world that we're saddling up to ride headstrong, equipped with chacos, a full Nalgene, and a beating heart into, is riddled with invariably complex and wicked problems. Intractable conflicts that sometimes have seemingly unattainable solutions. No longer are the problems that natural resource professionals faced with simple. And maybe these conflicts never were simple, but the perception of them decades ago relied on key points of action. If only we can pass this bill to protect this landscape. If only we can stop this company from cutting trees down on this one plot. Our understanding now of the complexity of problems and their potential solutions, as we've learned in our studies the past four years, has increased tenfold. Now we learn of the social and economic implications of environmental actions, loopholes and policy, environmental injustices and histories of past grievances, and how each component in ecosystems is inextricably linked to every other component. This creates a more difficult implication for us, entering into this world as the new stewards. How will we go about making a difference? How will we go about making our mark? How will we find these solutions? Or how will we go about leaving no trace? Over the past four years, I've gotten bogged down in these issues into analysis of who I am and what I can truly offer into this world. I'm surrounded by you, wonderful people, who have incredible capacities and who I would hope and be honored to work with in the future if our paths ever cross. But when I've gotten down on myself and on the wickedness of the problems we face, I've tried to prod myself to imagine what else I could possibly work towards. What other industry drives my heart and truly drives my passion? For me, I always come back to nature. I can't think of working towards anything else. So what is your alternative? The amazing thing about this college that I've seen 
is the passion of the students to protect the resources that reside deep in their hearts. Students in Warner are different from those in other colleges. The only way that I can describe it is that all of us have this intangible passion within us for the cause that we've chosen and why we chose to study the natural world surrounding us. We all have varying reasons for going outside, whether it's for adventure, solitude, challenge, friendship, or peace. But our love for nature is what kept us studying, putting in those hours of in-classroom dues so that upon graduation, we could work towards something that stirs us, that gives us the tools to work in an industry that other people vacation through or don't think is even possible. I can't think of anything that makes me feel more motivated and gracious daily, that I can work towards something I care about so deeply alongside friends who feel the same. My mom mentioned a quote she heard a few months ago, don't trade your dreams for security, and it has really resonated with me. When I look back on the experiences I've had here in the Warner College, the most impactful times were those that pushed me to be uncomfortable. I would urge my peers here tonight to think of your equivalents, of what has expanded your mind's capacity to understand, and try in the upcoming years to consistently put yourself in those types of situations again. These are the experiences that have led to transformative moments, the ones that force us to really tap into our souls and contemplate the meanings which drive us. So take action. Every story you've connected with, every leader you've admired, and every little thing you've accomplished is the result of taking action. You have a choice. You can either be passive at the whims of the throes of life, or you can be intentional, your own greatest advocate of the life you seek to live. So push yourselves to always keep growing and learning as the years go by. I also want to emphasize how important relationships are and will be, from the potential benefits of networking to the reliable acquaintances you've had over the years, i.e. that one person you always see in the bathroom, or the one person you always see when you take a big bite of sandwich and the tomatoes dripping out of your mouth, or to the friends that you have um, right now, who the friends who have graduated, to the people sitting around you now. This is why we're here. We're here because of the people who have supported us, not only through our celebrations of successes, but through our darker times that have inevitably plagued all of us in moments that we never expected. From my almost daily 10-minute conversations with my mom, walking to and from classes in five-minute intervals, to compelling conversations with the amazing tribe of women I've grown close with over the years, to conversations of guidance and humor with my boss, Ethan. There have been such special individuals who have helped shape my identity the past four years. Those people have shaped who I am, the identity of me in college. And while that identity will change, I won't bring myself to forget, even in the slightest, the tribe of women and men who have laughed with me, held me in hard times, and shared beers and belly-wrenching laughs. Whether the people who have shaped your identity are here tonight or could not be here, take a moment to remember them, thank them. Let's never forget to treasure those relationships even as the years inevitably pass by. Lastly, whether you've grown up along rivers or among rolling plains or high in the mountains or next to the coast, we all have those places that have transformed us and shaped us. Take a moment to reflect on those places for you. Mine is up in the open farmlands of northern Montana, where the sky stretches from horizon to horizon and the land honestly seems endless. As we go out into the world, I urge the graduates to always remember and cherish your places. It's the love for them that led you here tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Courtney. At this time, I would like to call on Marina Rodriguez, graduating senior in fish, wildlife, and conservation biology, who will introduce our commencement speaker.
Thanks, Dr. Covenant. I have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Scott Gilmore. Scott Gilmore is Deputy, Deputy Executive Director of Denver Parks and Planning. Denver Parks consists of 250 urban parks of close to 6,000 acres. And the Denver Mountain Park System made up of 22 parks, 24 conservation areas, making up 14,000 acres total, and two bison herds. Gilmore graduated in 1994 with a BA in wildlife biology and minors in fisheries and conservation biology. He was recruited by the Colorado Division of Wildlife to help create this small urban fishing program that would introduce urban youth to the joys of fishing and conservation. In 2004, this program was recognized by the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame as having one of the most innovative and successful urban fishing programs in the nation. In 1996, Gilmore and his wife co-founded the nonprofit organization Environmental Learning for Kids, or ELP. Help me in introducing Dr. Scott Gilmore. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Scott Gilmore, and I am a CSU Ram. Graduate of the College of Natural Resources and a proud alumni of the class of 1994. I would like to thank CSU, President Tony Frank, Dean Hayes, for bestowing on me this honor of giving the commencement speech today. I would also like to acknowledge Ed Warner for his personal commitment to this college and his ongoing commitment to you students. I would also like to thank Michael and Irene Smith for their recent generous gift to this college and to the campus to get that stadium built. I would also be remiss if I did not thank some of the individuals who, who had a huge impact on my life here. My advisor, Dale Hine, who actually taught wildlife ecology, but in my time it was called Hine Ecology. Um, my dean, Dean Al Dyer, and one of my dearest and most closest friends, Joyce Berry, who could not attend today's ceremony, who was the past dean. I would also like to acknowledge a couple uh, teachers that actually taught me, Dr. Wilson, Dr. Knight, and, and Rusty Coleman. I don't know if he's a doctor or not, but I don't think I could call him a doctor anyway. A quick point, small choices in your life will make huge differences. In 1992, I walked into Professor Barry's office, Joyce Barry's office, and because I was told, you need to work in the field. You need to get some experience. So I heard Joyce was pretty cool. So I walked into her office. She's about this tall. She's blonde. And I was like, OK. It was the first time I met her. And I walked into her office and said, hey, you know, they told me I need to work in the field. So I actually just walked in her office and said, I need a job. I need some experience in natural resources. And so I told him a little bit about my story about coming from urban Denver. You know, urban kid, I just decided I wanted to study natural resources. She gave me a job on the spot. And to this day, that decision impacted my life to this point, and it was a huge, huge thing for me. I want to personally thank Joyce for being that mentor and role model and the support I needed when I was here at CSU. Okay, now, <laughs> graduates of the class of 2016 Warner College of Natural Resources, congratulations on completing this chapter in the book of your life. <laughs> so from here out, no matter what you do, or where you go for the rest of your lives, you will be a CSU Ram. Over the last four years, and for some of you five, six, seven, eight, depending on the amount of fun you were having or the fun you weren't having, you have created amazing memories at CSU and here in Fort Fun that you will treasure forever. Memories of the city of Fort Collins, Old Town, Horsetooth, the Poudre River, the Mountain Park Campus, formerly known as Pingree Park. I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm not staff, so I can say that. So, um, Hughes Stadium, and right here in Moby Arena, 
are very precious and special chapter in my book of life. Hopefully the memories you have created here are as wonderful and as special as mine. I attended CSU from 1990 to 1994, and 22 years minus one day, I sat where you are sitting today. From that seat, I went on to work at the Colorado Division of Wildlife for over 18 years, teaching hundreds of thousands of kids the joys of fishing. I now work, had to check some, I now work for Mayor Michael B. Hancock of Denver, managing one of the most amazing park systems in the world. Denver has over 20,000 acres of parkland from parks from the alpine tundra, tundra on Mount Evans to the short grass prairie by DIA. Our park system can boast that we have the highest altitude park in the world. City Park that we own, the city of Denver owns, is the highest park in the world. We have Red Rocks Amphitheater and, and Park. We actually have Buffalo Bill buried in one of our parks. And we own two bison herds. There's not many park systems that can boast that kind of resume. If you have any questions about what I do on a daily basis, please watch an episode of Parks and Recreation. <laughs> it is true to life. You might watch it and say, there's no way. But I'll tell you what, when you see what you see on TV is exactly what I experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And just so you know, I am Leslie Nope. <laughs> I also co-founded with my beautiful wife, Stacy Gilmore, 20 years ago, a nonprofit called Environmental Learning for Kids, or ELK for short, which introduces a diverse urban youth population to the joys of natural resources. It's things that you already know and, and hold dear to your heart. And you know that we have to cherish those natural resources and protect them every day. I would like to acknowledge someone who's here from Elk, a young man. His name is Dondre Smallwood. Dondre, stand up. Dondre Smallwood was a young man that I took fishing and hunting. Me and my wife, Stacy took fishing and hunting probably about when he was eight. He is now on his way to graduating in December with a biology degree. Thank you for being here, Dondre. As all of you guys know, you guys are here because of the great support in this Moby Arena that you have been given. I didn't get here today without the amazing support of my family, who some of are here today. My wife, Stacy, my beautiful children, Samantha, Sterling, and Serenity, and my two brothers, Jake and Vince, who aren't here, but also the patriarch of my family, Jacob Gilmore. I would ask my father to stand up, please. Pop. That's my dad, and you know, you gotta say thanks to Pops. So, a huge part of who I am today is due to my mom. Six months before I stepped foot on this campus, my mom passed away. My mom, Hatsu Susie Gilmore, passed away. But I know today she is looking down on me and she is quite proud of the person I have become and the things I have accomplished. Every day, you guys continue to write pages in that book of life that is yours. That story can change in a split second, good or bad, by the decisions you make every day. Once you make a decision, do not regret your decision or the resulting outcomes unless it was a stupid decision from the first place. <laughs> Don't be so focused on what your vision of what your life and your career are supposed to be that you're gonna miss amazing opportunities that are right front in front of your face. For example, when I came onto this campus, I didn't hunt or fish. I like to watch wildlife. Um, I didn't fit in really. So, but you know what, fishing, ended up being a major, major stepping stone and the, in the success I enjoy today. I do remember my mom taking me and my brothers fishing as a kid, but I truly believe 
The only reason she took us was to get the extra rods. My mom was Japanese, and she loved to catch and eat fish, probably eating more than the catching. So I truly believe she just took us all and dragged us along so she could have the five rods out there, and then she could catch that increased bag limit. But not really having amazing, amazing fishing skills when I graduated did not stop me from teaching kids how to fish. Over an 18-year career with Parks and Wildlife, we created an urban fishing program that was designed to teach a couple hundred kids how to fish. That program in, that program in 2011 taught over 40,000 kids and their families how to fish. The success of that program was not based on my fishing skills, and I gotta ask them, are they gonna put that picture up? They did? There it is, all right, okay. The success of that program was not based on my fishing skills, since I really didn't have any. I didn't even know how to tie a clinch knot. Um, but, and after 18 years, but after 18 years of doing that, I did gain some serious fishing skills, as you can see in the picture behind me. Actually, that was yesterday. Um, we actually took some kids out as part of an environmental learning for kids fishing program, and I caught that fish with these kids, and so I did learn a little bit about fishing. So, I can take, the big thing on this is, I can take a group of kids fishing, 40, 50, 60 kids. We can go out to an urban lake, and we can sit around that lake, and guess what? We can not catch a fish, but those kids, in that process of me taking them, will learn about ecology. They will learn about natural resource management. They will learn about all kinds of wildlife that is visiting that pond. And those kids will walk away with a, a, an appreciation of wildlife and natural resources, and it becomes a positive chapter in their book of life. I mention this because I never dreamed that taking some kids fishing could become a career. But I wasn't so blinded by the vision of what I wanted my career to be that I did not grab the opportunity to make something special. You graduates are entering a time of your life when there's unlimited possibilities for your career. Of course, you can go the traditional career, state agencies such as Parks and Wildlife, federal agencies like the BLM, Forest Service, National Park Service. But don't be so focused on wanting to work for the traditional agencies that you miss creating a phenomenal opportunity for yourselves and impacting the future of our planet's natural resources. There are parks departments like the one I work for today that are handling huge natural resource issues. Denver Parks has a team of over 40 foresters that are working proactively to manage emerald ash borer. Denver has over 330,000 ash trees in the city, and it's gonna take a lot of highly skilled and trained employees to effectively manage that, that process over the next two decades. There are amazing jobs out there in the private sector, such as positions with the green energy or oil and gas companies. On the other end of the spectrum, there is a wide range of nat natural resource careers with groups such as the Nature Conservancy or Sierra Club. There's also a lot of community-based nonprofits out there that can offer you amazing opportunities to really touch people's lives, like the work that I have done and my wife has, have done at Environmental Learning for Kids. This work impacts youth and their families and there's no way that this work can be measured by any metric. I know people always wanna measure everything now. Let's measure this and measure that. You know what? I actually took a young lady. I took her hunting, big game hunting. And we, we, she actually was successful at harvesting an elk. She took that elk back home and, it, and she actually had a celebration with her family. They had a big family gathering and they cooked dinner. And she looked over at her grandfather and her grandfather had tears in his eyes. And she said, Grandpa, why are you crying? And he looked up and he said, I remember, I used to have to hunt and fish to put food on my family's table. 
But in the process of his family moving to the city, they lost that tie to the land. Her being successful at hunting that elk and putting that food on her table actually re rekindled a tie to the land and a tradition that family had lost. So that's an amazing, amazing chapter in her life, my life, that I might not have never been able to experience if I had not worked you know, so closely with a small nonprofit. Volunteer work also shows your beliefs and your commitment to what you believe in. I know you've heard in the last four years, you need to volunteer, you need to volunteer, you need to volunteer. It's true. It also shows the empathy and understanding that you have that you know what, you are a lot more privileged than a lot of other people out there. It shows that you understand that and that you are, you are willing to give back and to work with others to make sure that they have a better life. Even something more important to me is your work ethic and your expectations. When I look to hire someone, it's not because of where they've graduated. I am looking at them to see if they are willing to give that extra mile and do that extra work to get the job done. The degree you are receiving today, it's quite an honor. But guess what? It's just a piece of paper on the wall. You need to back that degree up with what you have learned over the past four years, utilize critical thinking and real life actions to get the job done effectively and efficiently. And please do not expect me to pay $100,000 to you just because you graduated. Please keep your expectations in check when, and, and keep your expectations in check on what you believe you are worth. There's nothing worse than a recent graduate coming into an interview thinking they should be paid more than people like these people that have committed their whole lives to natural resource management. Remember, the last four years of your life are just one chapter in the book of your life. Today, you start writing the next chapters in a book that is not even half complete. Do not waste the pages that have not been written. Make good decisions. Work hard. Be respectful. Do not look back. And hopefully, when you get to my age, you can say, wow, I wrote a damn good book. Again, graduating class of 2016, Warner College of Natural Resources, congratulations and good luck. Thank you very much, Mr. Gilmore. Will Dr. Brett Briere, Associate Professor in the Human Dimensions of Natural Resources Department, please come forward to recognize our university honor students and honor society initiates. Thank you, Rich. We want to give recognition to students who have achieved particularly high academic marks during their time here. Um, the University Honors Scholar and on Disciplined Honors Scholar must complete a program of academic excellence which includes honors seminars, honors courses in their major, and a senior honors thesis while achieving at least a 3.5 GPA um, throughout their four years. These scholar candidates are wearing green regalia and those with gold cords are also candidates for graduation with Latin distinction. Uh, direct the audience to page 38 of the commencement program for a list of the honor scholars that are graduating today, several of whom are with us, and we'll uh, recognize each of you individually. We have 16 from our college uh, today's ceremony. So as I call your name, if you would stand up and then we'll recognize you with applause at the end. Joseph Di Maria, Melissa Miller, <laughs> Cassandra Shoresman, and Amanda Weber from the Department of Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Jordan Listina and John, and John Went from the Department of Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. Samantha Beach. Sarah Brandenburg, Nick Dana Miller. 
<laughs> Rachel Mason, Matthew Paul, Scott Powers, Marina Rodriguez, Sean Williams Perez, and Greta Wilson Hedgem from the Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology, and Courtney Nauman from the Department of Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. Congratulations for your honors achievements. You can be seated. We also want to recognize candidates of distinction for uh, today's ceremony. These graduates symbolize the top 10% of all graduates across the university this semester uh, during their four years. Um, under the policy of the faculty council, candidates for distinction are as follows. Those with the distinction of summa cum laude constitute the top 1% of today's class. Those designated magna cum laude constitute approximately the next 3%, and those designated cum laude constitute the next 6%. The students who've been nominated for these distinctions are wearing gold robes or green robes with gold cords and will be identified separately as they cross the stage and receive their diploma this morning. But would you please stand now and be recognized as a group? And finally, scholastic achievement and professional potential are recognized by various national, national honor societies. Select members of today's class have been recognized for their achievements through initiation in Xi Sigma Pi, which is the only national honor society that recognizes students in natural resources and forestry. Students who've maintained excellent academic records and exhibit outstanding potential for success in their specific uh, professional areas are invited to membership. You'll recognize these graduates by their green, white, and gold stoles. Would the members of Xi Sigma Pi please stand and be recognized as a group? Congratulations to all of you. Thanks, Brett. Our master's and PhD students uh, officially received their degrees on Friday in a separate ceremony. However, we'd like to say a special congratulations to those graduates. Now, will Dr. David Gilkey please come forward to confer the degrees? Graduates. First of all, I think we should uh, give one more round of applause to Scott and Courtney. They had some fantastic messages for you. Let's give it. So I thank Dean Hayes and uh, Associate Dean Conant for uh, inviting me to come, come today to confer. This is my sixth commencement uh, ceremony, and what a wonderful way to cap off my role as interim Vice Provost for Undergraduate Affairs. So with that, these are probably some words that you won't hear again, or you might, but I think you should stand. Let's have our graduates stand. Come on, stand up. Congratulations, graduates. By the virtue of authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System, I hereby confer the Bachelor of Science degree on each of you, together with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining to thereto. Appertaining thereto. And you won't hear that one again either. Let us all recognize the achievements of this class. You can be seated. Thank you, Dr. Gilkey. Would department marshals please escort the graduates to the front of the stage to receive their diplomas? Would Dr. Uh, Dean Hayes and Dr. John Moore please come forward? Now, Mr. Rocky Coleman from the Department of Forest and Rangeland Stewardship will begin introducing the graduates of 2016.
the Department of Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Jonathan D. Adams. Sander Hewitt Applett. Joseph P. Bouchard. Joyce Chitechi. Caitlin Liana Taylor. Brendan Ross Elba. Gemma Missouri Fadham. Joseph Victor Fator. Eric M. Johnson. Connor Michael Kelly. Michael Taylor Lynn. Austin Wayne McKillop. Stephanie Marie Moothart. Christina Marie Neal. Clark Garrett Olds. Cassandra Rose Shoresman. Katie Sprouse. Abigail Elise Sumanis. Elizabeth Harris Streeter. Dennis Clark Wigenic. James Michael Bickle. Will Creed. Joseph Charles De Maria. Frank Morgan Denny. Robert Lee Davis III. Grant Thomas Eastman. Alyssa May Epifanio. Daniel E. Graves. E. E. Hu. Melissa D. Miller. Cassidy Lee Rosencrantz. George Wakefield Schumacher. Jordan Scott Turpin. Amanda Nicole Weber. Sing Yu. Next, the Department of Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. Nelson Conrad Parrish. Colton James Weaver. Jacob Anderson Fitzpatrick. Christopher J. Oberzier. Andrew R. Berger. Mark Edward Anderson. Elisa M. Dolan. Dylan Patrick Murray. John Luke McCarty. John Arthur Frederick Went the Fourth. Michael M. Davis. Maxwell Cody Cook. Yeah. 
Samantha Block. Max Kluver. Ethan Patrick Orbach. Brandon Wayne Shirk. Tyler James Murray. Alexandra Nicole Sorensen. Jessica Nicole Smolensky. Thomas Rowan Shields. Brockton Lyle Ward. Kaylee Renee Smith. Eric Arthur Waring. Cody Liam Bryant. Trent Eugene Schaefer. Taylor Robert Wright. Sarah Louise Daisy Robb. Riley Michelle Meyer. Aaron Thomas Flores. Samuel Ryan Fowler. Christopher Keith Rogers. Colin James Randall. Ryan C. Hall. Shai Julius Fulmer. Robert Credick Riley. Greg Bolleton. Cody Dakota Thompson. On Adam Campbell. Sydney Alexandria Handy. Ryan Taylor Cosgrove. Dakota Marie Truitt. Evan Stefan Arnold. Matthew J. Juno. Alyssa Ann Rosenau. Lauren A. Brueggemann. Mary Catherine Tiernan. Nicholas Dean Monzingo. Ben Brunmeyer. Bradley Mark Lalande. Joshua Aaron Thomas. Chad Tecumseh Avery. Matthew R. Buchanan. Tyler Samuel Knox. Clinton Andrew Sawyer. Golden Blake Reigns. Joshua Edward Lanting. Jordan Thomas Lestina, magna cum laude. Anthony Francis Denicola. Robert Joseph Ferguson. Amanda Haley Astor. Right. 
Now, the Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Dustin Lee Betts. Danielle Marie Gehring. John Robert Thibodeau. Colton Frederick Robb. Sean Michael Williams Perez. Sarah Marie Brandenburg, magna cum laude. Samantha Ann Beach, magna cum laude. Megan Marie Johnson. Megan Lee Jones. Victoria Rima Petrauskas. Sierra Elizabeth Seidel. James Vladimir Andrew Scarlett. Serena Bianca Mares. Brianna Silk. Colton Brown. Rebecca W. Tomlin. Chase Michael Pomering. Cody Rain Backen. <laughs> Emily Marie Bosch. Margaret Elaine Michael. Catherine McDougal de Vlaming. Jacqueline Ann Johnson. Evelyn Chantal Goncalves. Cody Steven Tyler. Reese Aubrey Samuelson. Curtis Dean Yaus. Rachel Marie Mason. Cum laude. Taylor John Janacek. Matthew Gunner Paul. Kristen Joe Botsit. Taylor Kaylin Logan. Nicholas Gerald Dannemiller. Greta Elise Wilson Hengem. Christopher John Thompson. Jane Summer Ellis. Alyssa Michelle Graziano. Nicole Kerwin. Catherine Marie Petrus. Scott Wilbur Powers. Kimberly Maxson. Cole M. Rankin. Samuel Joseph Lehman. Maxwell Ian McDaniel. Victoria Elizabeth Garduño. Benjamin Charles Jarvis. Jordan Michael Joseph. Graham Connor Bugs. 
Megan Patricia Keating. Yeah, yeah. Callie Jimmy. Yeah. Marina Dallas Rodriguez. And now the Department of Geosciences. Timothy James Maloney. Lonnie Justin Hufford. Alexander Blaine Jacob. Madeline Alyssa Egger. Patrick Kelly Gibbs. Joseph James Linder. Travis James Cunningham. Sean C. Horn. Mason Rivers DeMist. John Allen Harris. Bryce Marshall Johnson. Andrew Pryor Wickham. Truxton Gray Blazik. Prescott Chase Delaware. Benjamin Adam Kupernick. Andrew Don Servold. Joseph Michael Pascal. Caroline Santamore Townsend. Fisher Ray Ankney. Now the Department of Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. Jared Matthew Parker. And these two are the first graduates of the new program in Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. Michaela Nicole Burns. <laughs> Melissa Rianne Balthrop. <laughs> Max R. K. <laughs> Ashley Bostic. <laughs> Paige Dakota Garlic. <laughs> Jacob Madecki. <laughs> James Scott Brannock. <laughs> Jeffrey Daniel Barker. <laughs> Otto Dean Jordan. James Patrick Van Deventer. <laughs> Adam Rayburge Blaylock. <laughs> Luke Edward Oleksak. Amber Morgan Candelaria.
Christine Larson Statler, Andrew Allen Brumley, Jonathan Luke Thompson, Alexander Beck, Tanya Noreen Papa, Jake Mitchell Siebert, Kirsten Elisabeth Wernert, Jeremy Ron Trezaglu, Samantha Christine Sir, Zane Moss, Kevin Kumar, Brianna Berry, Casey Aaron Lammert, Jennifer Finch, Malia Ann Michael, Megan Marie Schneider, cum laude, Barbara Ann Wittenberg, Andrea Noel Segura, Eric Brett Trousil, Lillian Claire Schroeder, Naomi Showquist, Nora Marion Cook, Ashton Lindsay Patrick, Jessica Lee Ostwald, Colin Robert McDonald, Chelsea Ann Holmes, Chase Michael Bertinoli, Joshua James Horton, Kelly Roth Broadbear, Courtney Ann Nauman, Connor Riley, Alexander Stephen Fisher, Chantel Amalia Chavez, Kelly Jean McGuire, Haley Elizabeth Oswald, Joseph Robert Tort, Sarah Bat, Alexandra Diane Anderson. Jennifer Lynn Brickler. <laughs> Stephanie Danielle Sarusi. <laughs> Dylan Ann Seavey. <laughs> Charlotte Ann Thompson.
Conlon Byron McGue. Nathan Mathai Peralt. Alexandra Stone Freericks. Michaela Suzanne Adair. Cody M. Oliver. Amber Lee Jones. Joseph Ray Cooper. Jordan M. Reeves. Matthew Douglas Lair. Spencer Malcolm. Morgan Elizabeth Burkett. Alexander Steele Bourne. And Jillian Diane Long. So let's congratulate the graduates. Now, will Ms. Caitlin Martinez please come forward to address our new alumni? You'll have to forgive me if I come off a little nervous. I'm used to talking to stands of trees, not stadiums full of people. <laughs> My name is Caitlin Martinez, and I'm proud to say that I am an alumni of Colorado State. I also have the privilege of working for the Colorado State Forest Service, and I only say that not to brag, but to give you, the parents, assurance your graduates will get jobs. And although I am facing what everybody calls the real world, uh, just 12 short months ago I was sitting where you are with my brand new diploma from Warner College of Natural Resources. I remember the day I graduated from Warner College fondly. It was full of warm hugs and congratulations. I was surrounded by peers I enjoy and people who supported me. And man, was I excited to finally get that diploma in my hands after five long years of hard work. <laughs> so excited, in fact, that I took the diploma, shook the hand, rushed over to take my picture, and I was holding the diploma upside down. That moment is forever captured in time, hanging up on my parents' wall, and you could say it's one of my prouder moments. I also remember feeling a little sentimental and anxious about leaving a community that had become a home and jumping into my career. And I'm sure that that is a feeling that's amongst you graduates right now. However, no matter where your journey is taking you, I want you all to know one thing and that is that you all have one very important thing in common with each other and more than 200,000 others that have come before you. And that is that you are now alumni of Colorado State. I would like to be the first to welcome you to the alumni family. You join poets and teachers, entrepreneurs, food producers, care providers, natural resource managers. One thing can be rest assured, and that is when you leave your university, your university will not leave you. 
No matter where your personal and professional journeys take you, remember that the CSU Alumni Association, your former professors, and the Warner College will be here with you every step of the way. One year of post-grad life has not made me wise, but I have learned a couple of hard life lessons. And one of those is that you have to define success for yourself. And like any good life lesson, it is a process full of trial and error. And if I know the nature of Warner College, I know that the people surrounding you right now, your peers, played a pivotal role in your college success process. These are the people who sat by you during those long and sometimes boring research papers. They helped you endure countless hours in the Warner Computer Labs. And let us not forget the endless memorization of Latin names. I'm looking for you, Rocky Coleman. <laughs> My point is, is that these people are important. And these are going to be the people you look towards and lean on when life gets rough. And ultimately, they're going to be the people that help you learn how to define your own success in life. Congratulations on a job well done, Warner College. Enjoy these moments, soak them up, you've earned them. I look forward to seeing all the successful and wonderful things you do in the, in the world of natural resources. Go Warner and go Rams. Would Dean Hayes please come forward and give us our closing remarks. Thanks very much, Rich. Scott, Courtney, thank you so much for starting us off here. And Scott, I want to especially welcome or thank you for the 1,700 students that are going to be in my office asking for a job. <laughs> That's been a great morning. And uh, as morning has transitioned into afternoon, I know you're all anxious to move on to your celebrations and other things, so I'll try to be brief. But to, to, for today's graduates, uh, I want to leave you with two final thoughts. And the first is a request. Today, you move from being a student to being an alum. We look forward to you taking your place with Caitlin and with hundreds of other alums of the college who continue to stay in touch with us and work to help us build on the passion that we share. As students, you have benefited greatly from our alums who've given their time and their, their resources to make us stronger, who've worked with us to envision and build the best possible programs, and who've shared their wisdom and guidance to help you in your education. As new alums of the college, we look forward to maintaining our connection to you, and we'd love to see you at NR days, at seminars, alumni gatherings, college or university events. Please, please stay connected. My final comment is a personal reflection that I wanted to share with you and hope that maybe it will have some value to you. Last weekend, I read an article in the Colorado about the Poudre River and the ways that the Fort Collins Riverfront has changed over the past three decades during the lifetime of most of our graduates here today. In decades gone by, the pooter was seen as an inexpensive and convenient way to dispose of waste and trash. The pooter became an unhealthy and ugly place far different than the river which we see today. But things changed. Change didn't happen on its own, and it was, that change was far from inevitable. A handful of dedicated people with a vision of making our world a better place rolled up their sleeves, worked hard, and they made it happen. They took that corner of the planet that's our backyard, and they made it a better place. You and I are the beneficiaries, the beneficiaries of the investment in the future that those people made. In thinking about the journey that each of you are on, I know that you too will encounter places, people, and organizations that are in need of help crying out for someone to roll up their sleeves and do the hard work to make things better. 
You leave here and you continue on your path into a society and a world faced with immense challenges. As we sit here today, we can scarcely imagine what some of the issues are and the problems that you'll be facing as your journey unfolds. But though the challenges are great and the future uncertain, as I stand here and look out amongst today's graduates, I'm left with a tremendous sense of optimism and confidence. I have confidence that you will know that um, in you and know that you have the foundation that you built here at CSU to have the skills to build a strong future. That the interactions that I've had with many of you leave me with confidence that you'll be amongst the people that dig in, roll up your sleeves, and make the, better, the world a better place for all of us and for future generations that inherit the world that you create. So with that, go forth, do great things, make a positive impact on this amazing planet that we live on. It's been wonderful having you as students in our college, and I wish you all possible happiness and fulfillment as you pursue your dreams and as you take the next steps on that path. So with that, please stand and join John Lewick in the singing of the Colorado State University alma mater. I'm sure Congratulations again to our graduates, and thank you all for joining us this morning. That concludes our ceremony. Please remain seated as the platform party, faculty, and students exit. Thank you.
Thank you.